What I'm gonna show you guys essentially how to make is something called a burn. A burn is an ancient tool, uh, Mesolithic, Neolithic time frame, and it was a bone, wood, ivory, antler sort of carving tool, and it, it functions very much like a chisel. Not a chisel you would strike with some sort of mallet, but more or less a carving, an engraving sort of chisel. They're not too hard to make, but it is one of those essential tools. If you're trying to dive down that that rabbit hole of lithic technologies and lithic tools, a burn is definitely something uh, that's important to know how to make. I've got a bunch of different elongated flakes that were essentially pulled off a pretty much rudimentary core. I really wasn't uh, establishing a blade core and popping flakes off, but even with a hammerstone or antler, you can get elongated flakes that will work well as a burn. Most of the burns that uh, I create, I like to use kind of that two and a half, three inch length, just like this. Keep in mind, you can use even a, a discoidal flake in any one of these capacities right here. They will all create a burn, and it's up for you just to do a little shaping once you have a flake, but I will say a longer flake is gonna give you a little bit more uh, lifespan from that burn. Now, in order to create the burn, you need to have an anvil stone, and you need to have some sort of light hammer stone. I kind of use this hammer stone as my anvil stone. Reason being, it's just a little bit finer point at the top and allows me to kind of hold it between my legs. I'm gonna use a light hammer stone, probably this guy right here. And when I'm hitting flakes across my uh, anvil stone, I'm not looking to, you know, crush them. What I'm looking to do is just lightly refine my edge until this burn comes to a point. Once it comes to a point, these are just light taps. It's always good to have a, a couple uh, different flakes ready to go. Uh, I'm also abrading these edges because I'm not cutting with any of these flakes. So this right here is my rough tip. And essentially it's gonna act like a chisel. Now I have a rough point, my refined edges. This gives me the opportunity to hold the burn and get it into action. But before I go any further, there's a couple little extra steps. Now what I'm looking to do is remove a flake through pressure flaking or a soft billet down this edge here and down this edge here. That's gonna create a tip that's gonna act very much like a chisel and allow you to get into bone, antler, wood, whatever that case may be. We'll prepare a couple more. Let's use this guy right here. my edges. This right here is a burn blank. Rough point, I'm gonna flake those off. So I got three burn blanks. Let's throw some flakes down these guys and uh, give them that chisel sort of tip. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this flake in between my fingers so it's sitting perpendicular to my pad. I'm gonna take my flaker. So I just pop that one flake off, create an edge, and I'll come this way. That's what I want, right there, that tip. That's gonna allow me to get into some bone. I can, you know, refine these edges a little bit, but we are gonna lose some length off of these. But again, I'm popping flakes laterally at this side, this side. You can pop a flake off one edge. Uh, that's not an issue as long as you have kind of a chisel point you can alternate each side. It's really up to you. This will wear down, but it gives you the opportunity to have a very nice um, kind of scoring and cutting tool for bone, wood, ivory, things to that extent. Over time, these will kind of flare out and be a little bit more pointy, but there's one burn, we'll do a couple more. Let's go right here. There. And there's another one. First, you're gonna wanna establish your kind of Initial groove. I'm 
you can see just by scraping that little bit compared to a raw flake, it's gonna have a little bit more longevity. See, I'm looking to create a needle. I'm gonna create a adjoining side straight. So this will essentially turn into a needle. So let's get it out of there. What I'm going to have to do is come all the way through the bone through the other side. And obviously when you're done, you have to do a little final shaping, but... I'm constantly going in one direction with the burn. I can create kind of a, an irregular sort of scrape and cut pattern. I always want to make sure I'm shifting the bone, so I'm kind of creating a, a new grain, a new cut the whole way through, if you will. You'll remove a lot more mass, and you'll get through the bone a lot quicker. That's maybe after five, six minutes. see that needle starting to take shape and actually when I hold it up to light I can start to see through it just a little bit. There we go, starting to come all the way through. Don't want so tempting to just kind of pop it out but don't come to the back side. That'll help free it up. Let's get this guy in there. There we go. There we go. Nice. So with these burns, I was able to extract this solid piece of a bone from the middle of this uh, deer leg. Now why this is a smarter choice than smashing it is if I'm hitting this with a rock, and I've done this several of times to make needles, I could have some little micro cracks inside the needle, which could be a problem long term when I'm into sewing. Yes, this needle is going to need a little bit of refinement. The great thing is when I'm using that burn, I already got that majority of that grinding and sanding kind of done. The burn's edges really just wore most of it down and it almost comes out in a fully functioning bone needle. So yes, a burn is a very simple tool. Um, requires a little bit of uh, flake removal, but you don't have to pull it from a core. You can use any sort of discoidal flake and really, uh, you know, produce those lateral flakes that come off that tip and ultimately you know your tips will really start to take shape you know all three of these burns um, I just started to really refine their points down and before you know it this looks like a you know the standard archaeological find that you could come across for those cultures that use burns now it did take me about 20 minutes to you know extract this needle from this uh, leg bone of a deer but imagine if there's two or three working on it maybe five, six minutes each, and before you know it, uh, the needle's out. This is a great way to shape and carve antler. This is the same way that you would carve a harpoon. 
you got one long ridge and carving those teeth. If you ever wondered how it was done, they would kind of score that overall design and then use a burn to really get in there and uh, you know shape those teeth for a harpoon. This is that original technology to create those teeth, to create fishing hooks, bone needles, harpoons, uh, netting needles, but this is an essential tool if you're looking to go down that rabbit hole of uh, you know lithic technologies and some of those ancient cultures that existed. Burns, smart thing to know, but, uh, it will get the job done when it comes to crafting essential sort of tools. All right, that's Burns for you. Appreciate you watching.